Let's go, choir. Come help us sing those that will.
Good evening, and welcome back to New Haven Baptist Church this evening. Good to see everyone out in front of me and behind me. Glad you could be back with us to worship this evening. A couple announcements tomorrow evening, WMU meeting here at the church. Of course, Wednesday we'll have time together, prayer meeting, Bible study. That's on Wednesday evening. Uh, so keep those things in mind as we go through. Also, a special announcement. On May the 10th, you might have seen some of the flyers around here and in the bulletin, Gold City will be at Stearns First Baptist Church. That's on a Wednesday or Thursday night, I believe it's May the 10th. Uh, 7 o'clock, no charge for admission. Uh, come out, be enjoyed, worship with music. Uh, God has a good time and, and these gentlemen certainly come out together and worship the Lord. So that's on May the 10th at 7 o'clock at Stearns First Baptist. Do we have any special prayer requests to mention tonight or anyone that was laying on our heart or a praise or something like that that we'd want to share this evening? Just continue to remember Kathy Manus. I've asked prayer for my brother. I visited him yesterday. He was improved, so please continue. Thank you, Sister Wanda. Thank you, Linda. And Joe will be having some minor surgery on Friday. If the surgery probably won't affect his nerve, the anesthesia and being put to sleep for him is dangerous. Well, let's remember Brother Joe this week. Remember Laura and her dad. Thank you, Brother Joe. Remember the kids and teachers this week. I think this is a drug testing week. I heard a yes from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so let's remember our children and our teachers this week. Brother Cecil. Let's remember those requests this evening. S Sister Shelley, you had one? We'll continue to remember him. Any others? certainly remember him. Uh, remember Janice Miller. Uh, somebody uh, told me last time that she had breast cancer. Well, let's remember Janice Miller. And, uh, she lives in Florida. And uh, remember her. Thank you, Sister Judy. Patrick, I think Chad King may get to come home this week. From, back, uh, from Patricia Neal. I think that from information that I got this week, that may be correct. Uh, his wife is certainly looking forward to it. Also, remember Alice Welch. She hasn't been here in church two, three months. Well, let's remember Sister Alice. Well, let's join our hearts in prayer as we begin to worship this evening. Father, we're certainly blessed beyond measure and thankful for all that you've done in our lives. Father, for the health that we have, that we're able to come out and be together and worship you. Father, we mentioned many tonight that are weighing on our hearts. 
uh, from unspoken requests to named requests, Father, and, and those that we've just hid in our heart because we want to be private and lift them to you. But, Father, we ask that you would listen to each and every request. Father, that you would give us the understanding to wait on your answer, that we truly know that all prayers brought to you are answered in your time and in your way, Father. Father, help us to understand your answers to those prayers. Father, we pray for healing. We pray for comfort. We pray for encouragement for each of these, Father. Uh, for many just need a lifted up prayer uh, to you that you may continue to have compassion on them in their lives. Father, we pray that you will continue to use doctors to have healings in bodies, to work miracles uh, with people today that are in sickness, that need your help. Uh, Father, have diseases that only you can comfort. Father, we truly know that you are the great physician and will answer and can heal and will take care of all situations. Father, we know we should lean upon you upon all things, when in good times and when in bad. Father, we pray tonight that you will continue to have your hand upon us, that you will keep us safe, that you'll keep us strong in your word, guard us, to get, guard us against Satan as we go through our daily lives that we may not fall into the snares, but keep living for you. Father, keep us strong that we may show others Jesus Christ in all that we do and help us and encourage us to teach others uh, with our mouth uh, what Jesus Christ has done for us and the ability that we can share your word to help others come to know who Jesus Christ truly is. Father, we were blessed today to have one come into the family of God. And Father, I pray that you'll continue to help us grow in that situation where we can have others come to know you here in this church. Father, I pray tonight that you'll take this service and use Brother Lowry in a mighty way. That you'll keep him strong, keep him safe, and keep him working in your word uh, that we may continue to have messages uh, that you need us to hear. Father, I pray that we will take time tonight to remember you and all that we do when we sing and things we say and the understanding and listening that we give to your word. And Father, I pray that you'll come be in this service with us as we give all praise, glory, and honor to thee. For it's in thy name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
Let's worship together. He hideth my soul. Amen. Resolve no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have alert my sight. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. greatest highest I will come to thee I am resolved to go to the Savior leaving my sin and strife he is the true one he is the just one he has the words of life I will hate to him hasten so glad and free Jesus greatest highest I will come to thee I am resolved to follow the Savior faithful and true each day heed what he saith do what he willeth, he is a living way. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to win the kingdom leaving the paths of sin friends may oppose me foes may beset me still will I enter in I will hasten to him hasten so glad and free Jesus greatest Highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved 
and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. Taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit, we'll walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to Him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Thee. Gentlemen, if you'll come to receive this evening's offering. <clears throat> Brother David Brown, would you bless the offering this evening? Father, we bow again in your presence with a thankful heart. For this beautiful day that you've given or any time we can come together in your house it's a beautiful day and lord we praise you for that thank you for each one that's gathered here tonight lord and i pray you'd guide and help us pray for this offering as we receive it lord you just use it to magnify your name for we ask it all in jesus name amen, amen. When I first came in tonight, I thought, well, I must have run everybody off this morning. <laughs> but I'm becoming more and more convinced you are a late arrivers crowd. <laughs> I don't know if you just live that close that you can get here in a hurry or what it is. But uh, I was just a little worried or concerned that maybe I'd done something today that had offended you and you decided to stay away. But uh, you're here, and I'm grateful that you're here, and I know that the Lord has a blessing suited for every one of us that are in attendance tonight. And I really uh, am still trying to get acquainted, and please put up with me when I make mistakes like I did this morning. Uh, that could get to be embarrassing, and I don't want to be embarrassed, and I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I'm still trying to learn, and I'm a slow learner at this stage in life. But another area that I'm aware that you have a ministry to, and that is in regards to TV and also to the radio. And I don't hear a great deal about that. I don't hear much said about that. But I think uh, probably that you need to do uh, a little more promoting or something other of that because you never ever know who is watching, who is listening. For years we were on cable TV in Williamsburg. Back when I came to that town way back in 1977, nobody was doing anything with that. And we had the opportunity of doing that. And when we got started, First Baptist decided they wanted to be a part of it. That time it was Cumberland College, they wanted to be a part of it. And so we joined a partnership. And we had X number of hours a week 
that we were entitled to be on cable TV. But when I said all of that to say this, there were people in our viewing area that came to claim Main Street Baptist Church as their church. They couldn't attend, but they claimed us as the church that was their church. I even ended up doing some funerals of people that I did not know who worshiped with us on a regular basis. And we never know. So that's why I hope that you'll put your best foot forward whenever it comes to the singing and uh, to everything that you do. Because like I say, there's people out there that are looking to you and you are their place of worship. <coughs> now, if you have your copy of the scripture, we're going to the same text tonight to begin that we've been for the last two uh, Sunday nights. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1 and 2. And then we're going to turn over to the little book of Titus, chapter number 3, and look at five verses in Titus chapter 3. In Romans chapter 12, the last part of that is where we've been thinking about where it has to be uh, with the subject of renewing of your mind and so forth. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul writing to Titus chapter 3, 1 through 5. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawler, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now I want you to notice the last part of verse number 5, where he talks about the renewing of the Holy Ghost and the washing of regeneration. Now, two Sunday nights ago, I began with you a series of messages on Lord Renew. And, and the first subject that we talked about was Lord Renew my church or renew your church. And then last, not last and not the night before that, we looked at Lord Renew my walk. Now, tonight I want us to go and look at Lord Renew your spirit in me. Now, having said that, you can see that where I'm going is going to have to do tonight with the Holy Spirit. Lord, renew your Holy Spirit in me. The key to our renewing is the person of the Holy Spirit. And we need to remember that it's not that we need some new program or some new plan or some new technique 
what our church is and what you and I are in need of is a fresh renewing of the Holy Spirit in our life personally and in the life of our church. I read a number of years ago about a group of missionaries that had been working over in the bush country of Africa. While they were working in that bush country, there were also a group of monkeys in the area. And sometime later, the missionaries had to leave the camp for a while, and after a number of hours being gone, they came back to camp. And whenever they came back to camp, what they discovered was that the monkeys were kind of imitating what they had seen the missionaries do. And so they had gotten their wood together, and uh, they were sitting around the fire and holding up their hands or paws like they were warming their hands as they had seen the missionaries do. There was just one thing wrong, one thing lacking. There was no fire. Can I tell you that that's a pretty good picture of many of us as Christians and too many of us as churches. We've got the fire, but we don't, or we've got the wood, we've got the programs, we've got the plans, we've got the techniques, we've got all of this other stuff, but we don't have the fire. And the Holy Spirit is the one that does the renewing. Two things I want to talk about tonight. First of all, there is hope for renewal. I want you to hear me tonight in a positive way. There is hope for renewal. Someone has said, and I think rightfully so, that the most neglected and displaced member of the Godhead is not the Father, not the Son, but the Holy Spirit today. You see, there is an apparent absence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and too often in our churches. Some of you that are here tonight can remember as I did when we would go to church. And many, many times our buildings were much smaller, but they were generally filled with people. That day and time, folks didn't have a whole lot of places to go. And we went to church for our fellowship. We went to church to just simply be with people and to socialize and to enjoy the company one of another. That was a day when lost people, sinners, still went to church. Boys and girls went to court and to walk their girlfriend, boyfriend home from church. But in those services, I remember, I remember vividly the working, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And I remember seeing people visibly shaken, moved under the power of the Holy Spirit. You've heard some preachers talk about that they would see a sinner hold the pew until their knuckles would turn white under the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I saw that. I witnessed that. I saw that in the early days of my ministry. But I'll tell you, it's been a long, long time since I've seen anybody under that kind of conviction in any of the services that I've been in. There's an apparent need for the Holy Spirit's power and presence once again in our lives and in our churches. Now, you would agree with me, I think, that there's a great deal of ignorance abroad today about the Holy Spirit. Not only ignorance, but there's a whole lot of confusion about the Holy Spirit. And we've got some folks that have gone to the seed and gone too far to the extreme. And some of us who may be interested, 
are afraid to do very much because we don't want to be characterized like they are. And so we're kind of afraid uh, of the Holy Spirit. Could I say to you tonight, there's no reason, no need for any of us to be afraid of the Holy Spirit of God. He's not going to do anything that's going to embarrass you or make you ashamed. He just doesn't do that. Remember, he's the third person of the Godhead. So what do you know about the Holy Spirit? What do you know about his ministry in the church? I want to shed a little light, if I can, tonight on some of the role, the function, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And when we leave in a little while, I hope that you will be more informed than you ever have been. There's two basic terms used in the New Testament to describe the ministry of the Holy Spirit to us believers, to us Christians. Now, I want us to understand those two terms because they are critical, they are crucial. The first term that I want you to look at is the word indwelling, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, listen very closely. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enters your life my life at the moment that you and I are born again. The moment you got saved, the Holy Spirit came into your life. He took up residence. He is there this very moment. If you have not the Spirit of Christ, then you're none of His. So if you've been saved... You have the indwelling Holy Spirit in you. The death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus provided the means of our salvation so we could be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Let me, if I may, share with you the role of the Holy Spirit in your salvation and my salvation. Before he could ever indwell me, I, I needed to be saved. But when I got saved, then he came into me to dwell and to live within me. But all of that was wrought and brought about by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Four things very, very quickly. First of all, who is it that convicts us of sin? Who is it that makes us aware that we are a sinner? Who is it that convinces us that we're lost and doomed and damned? If you know your Bible, you know that's the role, the full ministry of the Holy Spirit of God. Say, Brother Lowry, where do you find that? In John's Gospel, chapter 16, Verses 8, 9, 10, and 11. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict or convince the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment uh, to come. And let me tell you, when He came to you, He convicted you, He convinced you, He revealed to you that you were in need of a Savior. And it was His role to do that, and He did that, and began to draw you and woo you to the Holy Spirit and to salvation. Number two, it's the Holy Spirit that regenerates us in salvation. You say, where do you find that? John chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Immediately you decide and understand that that's Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus. And Jesus told him that he must be born again of the Spirit of God. And he must be born 
from above. And that if he wants to see the kingdom of God, if he wants to be in the kingdom of God, he must be born again. The Holy Spirit convicts and woos and invites and encourages, but it's the Holy Spirit that does the work of regenerating you and making you that new person in Christ Jesus. That's his role. That's his function. Number three, he takes up residence within you at salvation. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. Jesus said that when he comes, he will be a comforter, another comforter, and he will abide with you, notice, forever. As long as you have life, the Holy Spirit is going to be inside of you. And then fourthly, he seals us until the day of redemption. A part of the function, the role of the Holy Spirit, when you and I got saved, He sealed us. Now let me talk about that word seal for just a moment. In the Bible times, the king and so forth would have a ring, and uh, that was used to put in hot wax and so forth to put a seal. And the seal, the king's seal that went there, Show that the king was the owner. Well, what this is telling us here is that whenever you and I got saved, the Holy Spirit of God sealed us. And I hope you understand tonight that when he sealed you, your destination is heaven. I don't know whether you understand that or not, but God don't allow no tampering with his property. And I'm his property. Now, I grant you, the devil would like to do everything he can to get me out of the Lord's hand and out of the Lord's power. Now from under the Lord's seal. But I will tell you, he stamped on me heaven, and I'm heaven bound tonight. And that seal will not be broken, and I will be delivered on the other side. And that's why we Baptists believe what the Bible teaches, and that is the security of the believer. My salvation is secure, not because of me, but because of him. Amen. And that seal is also a sign of ownership. He owns me tonight. I am his property tonight. And I will be delivered finally over on the other side when it's all said and when it's done. So the indwelling of the Holy Spirit comes out of our salvation experience at the moment that we repent, believe, and trust Jesus. He comes to indwell every one of us as children. The second term I want you to understand tonight is the term in filling. It's different from the indwelling. The infilling of the Holy Spirit is a term that has to do with the control of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit controlling us. The Holy Spirit being in charge of us. The Holy Spirit doing a lot of things as He works and controls in us. Where do you get that, Brother Lowry? Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18. Now look at that verse closely. Actually, the first part of it is a command. Don't be drunk with wine. But the second part of it is a command too. But be filled with the Spirit. Actually, it's a present tense. Be ye being filled with the Spirit. With the Spirit. In other words, it is something that is constant, consistent, goes on and on and on. The indwelling took place at the moment of salvation. Infilling is something that needs to go on daily in our walk with our Lord. In fact, there's kind of an analogy here. 
as he says, don't be drunk with wine. Now, I've never drank. Thank God, I've never ever participated, never ever tasted, and I never ever intend to. But I'll tell you, I have seen enough to tell me what it does to people when they're under the influence of it. I can tell you some names of individuals that are close to me, that I've seen them in that state of intoxication. You know as I know it affects their walk. It affects their talk. It affects their thinking. It affects everything about them. And what Paul is saying here is, hey, just like that wine or beer or liquor or whiskey intoxicates and takes control of that individual, let the Holy Spirit have control of you. That's what he's saying. And that's the point that he's making in Ephesians 5 and verse number 18. Now let's move quickly through several things that the Holy Spirit as He infills us does for us. For instance, in Romans chapter 7, verses 8 through 28, which is almost the entire chapter, He says that the Holy Spirit enables us to defeat the self-life. Now I need to help you to get a handle on that tonight. Because the devil will make us struggle with that all that he can. Romans 6, I have referred to you many times and said you need to study it. You need to camp there. You need to master Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 7 is the next chapter. You need to read that one too, real, real closely. Because what you find there is Paul's testimony of his life. The early part in chapter number 7, he tells you what he was before he got saved. And then he tells you in the middle part of it what it was like when he got saved. And then the latter part of it talks about the struggle that takes place now that he is saved with the old man, the old life. And he comes down to it and says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? And then he takes you into the 8th chapter which is the chapter in which the Holy Spirit takes control and does in you what the Lord saved you for to where you can live victoriously over sin, Satan, and the world. But you need to know that in chapter number 7, he talks about this struggle, but he says the Holy Spirit was given to you to enable you to where you don't have to say yes to the old life. Yes to the old man. Yes to the old sinful nature. You don't have to do that any longer. You've been saved from that. But the devil still has access to you. Uh, you are aware of that, aren't you? Uh, you are open-minded enough and honest and truthful enough that you'll admit that, won't you? That you're still tempted. I'm not only tempted, and I'm not proud, not happy. I give in more than I ever, ever want to. I do. And let me tell you tonight, First John says that if you and I do say, it ought to be an accident. Not something we plan to do. Not something we purpose to do. It ought to be something we accidentally end up doing. And I want you to know also that if we do, and he says you will in 1 John, you've got an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And if you'll do 1 John 1, 9, confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But the Holy Spirit indwelling us enables us to say no to this old self-life that we had before we got saved and still have to wrestle with. Somebody's kind of described it like that white dog and black dog inside of you. 
And I mean, they scrap, don't they? The old black dog wants you to still do the things of the flesh and the things of the world. The white dog says, no. You know what I'm talking about if you're saved tonight. You still have that war going on inside of you. And let me tell you, in your better moments, you want to say, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. The only way that you will come out triumphantly on the other side is by letting the Holy Spirit that indwells you infill you in that moment. And He'll help you to say no to all of that. So not only does He enable us, but in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, He cultivates Christian qualities. You familiar with those? Flip back, if you would, there quickly to Galatians chapter 5. And look at verse number 22 and verse number 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, there it is, is what? Love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. The Holy Spirit in filling us cultivates that fruit that it will grow and be productive in us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10, Paul reminded the Corinthians that he teaches us. Teaches us the deep things of God. Those things that we have a hard time maybe grasping and understanding. He teaches us. Not only that, but in Romans 8 verse 4 it says that he leads us. And then in Romans 8 verse 16, he assures us. And in Ephesians 3.16, He strengthens us. And then in Acts 1.8, which you're familiar with, He empowers us. Remember, He indwells you at the moment of salvation. But then as you are loving Him and living Him and ministering and serving Him, He infills you again and again and again, and again. I don't know about you, I leak. And so I need to be filled. And oh, it's His joy to keep us filled. You know, whenever I think about this, I think about that Old Testament prophet that talked about Israel and the cisterns that they got their water out of. Oh, cisterns. Now, you younger generation, you have no earthly idea or concept of what that's talking about. But I do. I grew up out in a community where we didn't have running water. We didn't have city water. We had cistern water. And that was right at the back of our house where my daddy and my older brother and I dug down in the ground and then concreted that and gutted the house and had that place that we ran down through charcoal and so forth and it went in there. We lived on a country road, dust. I want to tell you, sometimes we clean that thing out and I ought not to describe to you what we got out. You wouldn't want to drink the water, but that's all we had. It's all we had. The prophet said, why in the world would you exchange an old broken cistern for the artesian well of living water? But no, that's what Jesus told the woman at the well. Artesian well. Spring it up unto everlasting life. And the thing that I like to think about that is, hey, if you leak, then you're filled with fresh stuff all the time. Fresh stuff. Let me tell you, you won't ever exalt the Lord's Holy Spirit's presence or power. So just leak all over everybody. 
And just let him keep on filling you, loving through you, ministering through you. And you'll be excited and you'll enjoy it and they'll benefit from it. So there's the indwelling, there's the infilling. Two terms that's used in the New Testament. Now, how can you and I be renewed in the Spirit? How can I be renewed? How can you be renewed daily in the Spirit? Five things, I'm just going to mention them quickly. Number one, you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a choice. Now, whenever you get up in the morning, you can get up, just go about life like you would. But let me tell you, you need to choose either before you get out of bed or quickly after you get out of bed. Lord, hey, I, I can't do this today. I, I can't do it on my own. I need you, Lord. So, Lord, fill me. Take charge of me. Take control of me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Fill me, Lord, with yourself. You've got to decide that. You've got to choose that. You've got to make that choice. Did the Lord force you to get saved? Did he coerce you? Did he tie you down and say, hey, buddy? No. He gave you the truth, convicted you, convinced you, and he wooed you and invited you urged you and encouraged you and everything else. Wanted you to come. But you had to make the decision. Same way with the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You've got to desire. You've got to choose that He control you. That He leads you and direct you as we looked at the Scriptures a moment ago. So first of all, there's a decision that's got to be made. Number two, it's a daily thing. We need to be filled, uh, not just a one-time event. That's, that, that's the first thing that's talking about. You were indwelled one time at conversion. But you need to be filled again and again and again and again. I've already told you Ephesians 5, 18 says that. Stop being drunk. But you keep on being filled with the Spirit. Present tense, every day, every moment. Number three is devotional. Let me tell you, you, you need to have a devotional time, a quiet time, a personal time with God, where you and God get together and you yield and submit, recognize and acknowledge. Be on a first name basis. The Bible's a good book to use in your devotional time, but there's a lot of other good writings out there. Oswald Chambers has got one of the best that's ever been written. If you're not familiar with it, y'all look into it. I know people that read that through every single year, and they just keep telling me, hey, I just keep learning, just keep learning. Great devotional book. So you need to decide. You need to do it daily. You need to spend time in a devotion, but you need to be doubtless. In other words, don't doubt, but believe. It's a life of faith. We're saved by faith. We live by faith, and we are filled by faith, if you please. It's not feelings. It's faith. Trust God. And then lastly, discovery. Now, it's one of daily discovery. As I said, some people have gone to the extreme, and therefore we steer away from. Because you've heard about people jumping pews and speaking in tongues and acting silly and being embarrassed and all that kind of thing. Hear me. The Bible teaches that God does everything decently and in order. And if you'll just give yourself over to Him, He knew you from the beginning. He sees you from the end. 
And as Jeremiah reminds us, he's got a wonderful plan for your life that he wants to bless you with good. And you'll never know all that he's got for you until you let him take charge and take control of your life. And when we do, we'll be amazed at what God will do in us, what God will do to us, and what God will do through us. We'll be amazed. I close <coughs> with a story that I read some years ago. It has to do with Lawrence of Arabia. He came to London following his exciting military life and victories. But as he came to London, England, he brought with him a bunch of Arab chiefs. It was their first trip out of their desert country. And they were just in awe at what they found in London, in the big town, in the big city, for the very first time. But one of the things that impressed them the most was the water faucets. They lived in the desert where there was not much water and here they were in a hotel where they could turn a faucet and out came what? Turn a faucet and out came what? Turn a faucet any time and out came water. Well, when Lawrence of Arabia left and took the chiefs with him, the hotel management discovered strangely all of the water faucets were gone. Now, undoubtedly, they were under the impression that whenever they got back home, they'd have all of the abundance of water they would ever want. All they'd have to do would be there to pass it on. Just one thing wrong with that. It wasn't connected with the source of water. That applies to what I've talked to you about tonight. We have got to be connected to the Holy Spirit of God or we will not know His presence. We will not know His power. But He's available, anxiously waiting for you and me and for us as a church to just connect and let Him control and fill us because He already indwells us. May we pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, how often I have done what I have done in the energy of the flesh and nothing happened. How often, Lord, we meet at church and we go through the formality and rituals and everything else, but nothing happens because the Holy Spirit of God has not been given permission to do His work. Father, may tonight You use Your Word and use this message to inform us and, Lord, to challenge us. And yes, even, Father, inspire us to let You who lives within us take control and charge of us that you may do in us, with us, and through us what you saved us for. And I pray it in Jesus' name, and amen. John and the musicians are going to come, and we're going to sing a couple of stanzas of an invitational hymn. And if there is a response that you need to make tonight to the call of God, the voice of God, the conviction of God, the altar is open. You come. If I can help you in any way, I'm here to assist you. May we stand together as we sing. <coughs> I have decided to fall
turning back, no turning back, though nothing go with me, I still will follow, let's watch your singing, though nothing go One more stanza. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I. morning. I can see Brother Hood. Cameron came forward this morning, professed his faith in Christ, wanted to be baptized and be a member tonight. Uh, Miss Jasmine, Miss Jasmine, sorry. I uh, she's been coming for quite some time with Josh and, and she said, you know, she said, I know Jesus, but there's two things that I really need. She said, I need a body to worship with and she wants to come and be a member of New Haven Baptist Church. And number two, she wants to be baptized. Amen. Uh, Amen. So all those that would like to see her come and be a member of this church, do I have a motion that we receive her as a member of this church? I make a motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Yes, I have a second. All in favor <laughs> with the mighty amen. 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 Everybody loves you and everybody wants you. And we'll arrange for you to have a baptism here with us. Uh, it's great to be in the Lord's house today. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's always great when we grow and multiply. So as we have our benediction, after our benediction, if you come by, she's a great young lady. Don't just give her the hand of fellowship. Give her a hug. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and I'm not so sure I was thinking right when I asked Josh to come up here with us because he's making me look short. <laughs> Brother Lowry, this pray us out this evening. John, is there a chorus that you all know well? That we could sing in closing? Why, well, sure. Let's sing Victory in Jesus. All right. Let's uh, join hands one with another. If you could reach somebody close at hand there without having to move a hole per piece. Let's sing that as our benediction. And then you'll come by and welcome our newest member. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. And he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Come and shake hands with her and with one another. 